On the western edge of the state of Colorado and close to the city of Grand Junction and the village of Fruita is the Colorado National Monument, one of the most fascinating areas in the United States of America. Measuring a total of 83 square kilometers, the Colorado National Monument is one of the smallest national parks in the west of the USA. But the sight of its colorful canyons and striking sandstone formations is an experience not to be missed and one that will stay in the memory forever. The Colorado National Monument is part of the Uncompagre Uplifts, the northeastern section of the Colorado Plateau. From the 23-mile-long Rim Rock Drive, there's a magnificent view across the eroded rock walls of the mighty canyons. Fir, juniper and mahogany trees form the main vegetation on the high plateaus that are located above the sparsely covered canyons. These amazing rock walls plunge down almost 300 meters to the bottom of the dried out canyons below that are dominated by typical desert vegetation. The rock consists of several strata. Over time, they have become visible due to tectonic movement and constant erosion. The various textures of the strata caused by the erosion of the landscape in the Colorado National Monument are more obvious in some places than in others. The spectrum of color that ranges from orange to red and brownish colored stone is due to the presence of numerous minerals. The large variety of colors and shapes have united here to form a unique and picturesque work of art created by nature. A truly captivating sight. Today's park was given its official status in 1911, and this was due to the foresight of one man. John Otto was responsible for the establishment of the park. He saw it for the first time in 1907 and couldn't believe his eyes. John Otto was not only enchanted by the spectacular rock walls of the canyons, but also with the starkness of the surrounding area. Various types of conifer helped to break up the landscape. Each year, the number and variety of the region's wild flowers depends upon the climate. But it's mainly the remarkable rock formations and dramatic canyons that impress most who come here. There seems to be no end to the shapes and the patterns of the rocks, the elements having sculpted these remarkable creations.
For John Otto, this outstanding landscape was tantamount to the heart of the world. He fought tirelessly for the foundation of the park. Thanks to John Otto, the Colorado National Monument is also a national treasure and a major conservation area. The remoteness of this region provides those who come here with a totally natural way of enjoying these wonderful canyons. The region also provides an insight into the ecology of the western area of the United States. The magnificent views from numerous vantage points stretch beyond the park to as far as the plains of the Grand Valley and the Colorado River. However, it's not necessary to look into the distance to appreciate the outstanding beauty of this place. Erosion began here millions of years ago and continues to shape this unique landscape right up to the present day. Some of the sandstone formations have descriptive names such as Cleopatra's Couch and Squaw Fingers. The Colorado Plateau was inhabited more than a thousand years ago by the Native American Indians. Surprisingly, archaeologists have discovered almost no human remains in the area of the Colorado National Monument. Here, the focus is on the natural splendor of the park's beautiful canyons and rock formations. This landscape has an important significance for the religious belief of the local Indian tribes. Not surprising when looking at these magnificent rock towers, mighty cliffs and pinnacles. There's a kind of magic here, a special feeling. And it's easy to understand how John Otto came under its spell. Most of the park's pathways and vantage points were built when nature conservationist Otto worked here as park ranger until 1927. His dream of the conservation of this unique landscape has indeed come true. The Colorado National Monument lives on.